This is Wickham Sound. Hello everybody, my name is Dane Cobain. You're listening to The Art Show on 106.6 FM, Wickham Sound. We're on every Tuesday from 7 to 8 p.m. You can also check out our repeats on Monday nights. I believe it's at 11 p.m. Maybe tune in at 10 p.m. just in case, because, you know, you're going to listen to some great stuff on Wickham Sound anyway. This is the show in which we talk about the various artsy things going on in and around Wickham. Obviously, with the COVID restrictions, it's been a bit thin on the ground, but I do have something very exciting to talk about, which is our friend's acoustic number 11. I believe it was number 11. Uh, which is run by Maz Manzini. He's a local musician. We've actually played him on the show before, and I'm, I'm hoping we'll maybe get him on air to uh, to talk about it. But yeah, he runs a monthly open mic night slash jam at the Rose and Crown here in High Wycombe. Shout out to Kirsten at the Rose and Crown and to Bruce the dog as well, if Bruce is listening. I miss that little puppy. And uh, yeah, because obviously we can't gather in public to make some music, Maz decided to put on a virtual open mic. So this was co-hosted by Steph Willis. Uh, she's a fantastic singer, songwriter, performer. You've probably seen her around Wickham sometimes, to be honest. She, she plays a lot. And um, yeah, she helped Maz with the technical side. And just a bunch of us got together on Zoom and played some live music on a little Facebook Live event. And it was a, it was a lot of fun because a lot of them are musicians that you know I've seen perform at open mics before. Uh, Ant Barnes played there and he actually performed at the last event I went to before the lockdown. Sloth in the City, great duo. Yeah, it was a really good event and hopefully he'll put that on um, next month as well. So if it is on, it will be the, uh, the third Sunday of April. And if you search for Maz Manzini on Facebook, you'll be able to find his Facebook page. Give it a like and uh, check out when new stuff's going live. While you're at it, you should do the same with Steph Willis too, because she's been uh, doing lots of live streams. Everyone's going live stream crazy, really, which is a good thing. Uh, I've been doing one every Sunday night as well. Really, it's just an excuse for me to just play some guitar while maybe some people come along. I think I peaked at an audience of about 11. I was also watching this live stream the other day of like a like a psychedelic music festival, uh, like an online version of it. And so they've got a various mix of some, you know, videos were recorded at home at quarantine. Other videos were like live performances, you know, mostly from earlier this year, actually, from sort of February. And I'm, I'm, I'm watching the crowd go mental at these things and just thinking you have you have no idea what's coming. But it's good to see that the arts are still kind of still keeping going in this 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 hour of need. We'll actually be talking about this a little later on with this week's guest, who is Dr. Emmanuel Fombu. He's actually the first guest we've had on who's not from the Wickham area. He's actually a client of mine. I work with him as um, the editor on his books. And he talks about the future of healthcare and mainly about things like artificial intelligence and robotics and that sort of thing and how it can change the way that we, we look at healthcare to a more kind of preventative, personalized model. It's really, really cool stuff. Uh, the idea being... For example, a, a Netflix of healthcare. So the way that Netflix works, it uses machine learning algorithms and it gets to know what works well for different kinds of viewers. So when you go on Netflix and it's got your recommendations, it's making recommendations based on what it thinks you're going to enjoy based on other similar people. But then when we look at healthcare, you know, it tends to be a more generic, oh, well, this is the treatment for this disease. And we don't factor in a lot of lifestyle factors. I'm not going to go on about it too much because Dr. Fombu will talk about it with us a little later on. He's also going to be just giving a few insights in terms of what's going on with the coronavirus. Obviously, he's actively working in the medical field. He's also based in New York City, which is basically ground zero at the moment. We'll also be relating it back to the arts as well. Uh, you know, even in terms of things like the arts are super important now for safeguarding our mental health. Again, this idea of preventative medicine, it, the best thing to do is to not get sick in the first place. And that's what we're all doing when we're going out and we're washing our hands and maintaining social distancing. It's all an, a, an attempt to not get sick in the first place rather than to deal with the illness or the symptoms once they come up. Uh, so he's going to be giving us a few tips on how we can do that and how uh, how the arts can help us to stay safe and sane in times of need like the ones we're living in today. So to go back to live streams, I want to play a song by a local band that has been doing some live streams. I believe they did a live stream like in conjunction with, with Books Uni, I think it was. Uh, they've also been filming some quarantine sessions over on their YouTube channel, which I definitely recommend. If only because a lot of the videos are like photobombed by a little little Pikachu doll that watches in the background. 
So yeah, this is Persephone in the Underworld with their Quarantine Sessions version of Weird Fishes by Radiohead.
Love music. Love talk. Love Wickham Sound. Being a foster carer isn't just about providing vulnerable children a safe home. It's about loving, listening and guiding. It's about changing their lives. If there's space in your home and you have the time and patience, then Nexus Fostering wants to hear from you. We're your local fostering agency, rated outstanding by Ofsted, and we're here to support you in supporting them with full training and a competitive allowance. For a career that really makes a difference, visit nexusfostering.co.uk or call 0800 389-0143. From the 1st of April, your new Buckinghamshire Council will replace the existing county and district councils and continue to deliver all the services you are used to. Visit buckinghamshire.gov.uk Sunday evenings on Wickham Sound. If your idea of a fun festival experience is a mashup of metal, grime, blues, folk, pop, with a smattering of electro, hip-hop, Indian grunge, and not forgetting punk, then join me, Paul, for the alternative Wickstape at 11pm on Wickham Sound 106.6 FM every Sunday. I can even guarantee that the weather will be fine. This is Wickham Sound. Wickham Sound. All right, that was my mate Dave with Bad Luck Man, and before that we had Persephone in the Underworld with their Quarantine Sessions version of Weird Fishes by Radiohead. My name's Dan Cobain, you're listening to The Art Show on 106.6 FM, Wickham Sound. We're also on Facebook, and if you just search for The Art Show, Wickham Sound, we'll show up. You can also drop me an email on dane.cobain at wickhamsound.org, D-A-N-E dot C-O-B-A-I-N. I want to hear from you if you're in the local area and you're putting on anything artsy, especially things like live streams, local music, local performances, anything, poetry. If you want to share some poems, hit me up and uh, yeah, we'll do that. So this week we're being joined by Dr. Emmanuel Fombu. He is a client of mine. He's uh, a physician, author, speaker and healthcare entrepreneur. 
He's won several awards worked to some sort of high profile technology firms. He has a book out called The Future of Healthcare and then there are a few others that he's working on at the moment, including The Art of Predictive Medicine, uh, You're Not Innovative Enough, and The New Normal, which is about how coronavirus, COVID-19 and technology will change the world as we know it. So Dr. Fombu is gonna join us to talk about how COVID-19 has affected the arts as well as what his viewpoint is from uh, New York City. But well, first off, I wanna know, uh, Dr. Fombu, what book have you been reading? Last night I was reading Homo Deus, where Yuval Harari was talking about pandemics even Spanish flu and more people died than actually what is happening today. Yeah. And so looking at those things, and then someone like Bill Gates making a statement about it, and then Trump has an issue with WHO and then wants to blame people for it, and then now people have conspiracies around 5G and Bill Gates. <laughs> yeah. like, which is like, as if this is the first time this has happened, right? Which is off the garbage. And whether you have a debate, whether it came from the lab, we came from a wet lab, a wet, wet market, or whatever it is, the point is, it's here. How yeah, do we resolve exactly, it? That's, yeah. that, <laughs> that's the key issue right now, right? And because we'll never know where it came from, right? Yeah. These debates will never happen. And it, <laughs> like, it's all speculation. At the end of the day, is people are dying, and so they need to put on face masks and practice social isolation and, and, and do things around that, right? What role do you think? art and the arts have got in the you know in the COVID-19 world I, I obviously we've talked about things like mental health and stuff like that so what role do the arts play there I, I think um, the, the arts have a, a very key role to play in what we are actually dealing with today right uh, you have a world in which uh, human interaction has been brought down to a minimum right just yesterday for example when I was doing my radio show and we had uh, Ja Rule on board, like he was on the show with us. And there was a, there was a nurse that just worked the night shift and she called in um, and she was really down, she was traumatized. And, uh, you know, and being able to, you know, to listen to music and, you know, even speaking to Ja Rule and reminiscing um, about the 90s when, you know, early on in a, like when she started as a nurse um, in school and being able to talk to this person in general and connect to the art. She was so happy on the phone instantly, right? And yeah. I had a conversation with Jarul even after that, and uh, like off, off, offline, and we were having a conversation about the impact of, of the role that everyone can play, uh, especially during this pandemic, right? And just her being that happy at that particular moment changes the entire perspective of how she interacts with her family when she goes home, right? And when she goes back to see her next patients and how you know joyful she feels. Um, if you look at um, over the weekend, uh, you had uh, the Global Citizen uh, virtual concert uh, mm -hmm. with, yeah. with different celebrities playing music from, from different parts of the world, um, comedians, um, artists, and different people just being on there and just getting people to, to relate um, as humans anymore, right? And this big concept today of social distancing, um, I think actually sends the wrong message. Um, I think it should be more, it should be called uh, physical distancing, yeah, like, not yeah. social distancing, right? Because we, we still want to be close to each other. The idea is not to be disconnected from each other, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and you know, we, we are not robots. What makes us human is being uh, able to, you know, to emotionally really connect to, to you know, to, to, to art, to our environment, to each other, yeah. right? And I think art makes that possible, right? Um, even reading a book, for example, you know, makes you escape the reality of things. Yeah. Um, of where you live and you can, you can relate to other humans uh, especially in today's world where people are not traveling anymore right and this is going to be something for the long term yeah and I, I mean I think as well because obviously you've been doing um, you know your podcast and um, I, just something that strikes me as well is the arts aren't just fiction as well so um, you know I suppose the arts also have a role to to actually spread information especially in um, an age like today's where there's so much misinformation and you know people burning down 5g towers and stuff um, and so I think the arts can actually sp you know spread information and educate people as well information has always been spread um, through art um, a lot of times right because artists um, are very good at um, at, create, at, at creating communication regardless of people's educational backgrounds or what people do, right? You, you actually, it's, it's a medium in which you actually break down those barriers, right? Uh, it could be in a typical sense where if, um, to other doctors or, you know, other people in the healthcare space about uh, the, the current pandemic or, or cardiovascular disease or anything else, uh, the biggest issue is then communicating that to the average person that has uh, no idea about what we are talking about, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, through art, uh, through music, uh, 
take for example uh, my friend Zidok, for example, right? Yeah. Uh, he's been able to build a massive audience um, and create a new um, brand for himself, just based on the idea of he could use music, um, you know, and, and comedy to actually communicate deep issues about cardiovascular disease or healthcare um, issues. Um, you know, what what are the effects of health insurance or healthcare? Uh, you know, uh, you know, burnout be- between healthcare workers, suicide among healthcare workers, um, using that kind of element that people could come in and relax and actually get to, to learn, right? Um, and, and that's another interesting piece of why I personally am very interested in, in that uh, convergence of, of, of tech, um, you know, science and art, mm-hmm. right? I, I don't think there should be that much of a difference. I think they should all be together, yeah. right? If you look at the early, um, you know, philosophers and, and, and scientists, from Aristotle to Galileo, uh, these people were not just doctors or, phys- or, or physicists or, you know, they, they were poetry, right? Uh, they were astronomers, uh, they were also physicians. Yeah. So it was not one world fits all. I mean, so but in today's world, we are being like, uh, you know, put into this box of, hey, you are a writer, so you must be in the writer box, yeah. right? Or you're a doctor, you should be in the doctor box. Or you are a physics person, you should be in the physics box, uh, right? We are in this world where things are, uh, we have a mind and we have a brain and we are individuals, right? So you could be a chef and a doctor, or you could be a, a doctor and a writer, yeah. right? You could be a, a writer and uh, you could also like, um, you know, racing cars during your part time. Yeah. Or you could be a counselor, right? Being able to relate to each other. So, and I think we don't have a lot of that happening. Um, so I, I think um, it's great what you're doing. And I think uh, that's what I, will, I ideally would love to do as well, to connect to, uh, to the per, to Every to everyday person, everyone has an expertise in something. Yeah. Right? So being able to, you know, to, to have that conversation and understand how someone else feels uh, gives a better perspective for everyone. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And I mean, something that um, I guess you kind of hinted at there, and it is something that you've talked about a lot, which is um, the idea of of AI and um, humans together, and the idea of you know humans and machines together are better than they are individually. I wondered if you could talk a, a little bit more about that, and you know where you think. Well, t- I tell you what. Tell us how you think AI is going to kind of come into play into the arts industry. Correct. It, 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 it's very interesting um, in a sense, right? Where uh, Dan will be talking about this for several years mm. now, right? Like, like on a set of projects we've worked on in the past, uh, you know, from the Future Healthcare book, um, you know, and the whole concept was how uh, AI, uh, which comes down to the idea of prediction. Um, mm-hmm. Right, um, helps um, you know uh, improve uh, humanity. Right, whether it's in healthcare or it's in the art world, I think is the same. So, if you look at, um, it, I'll give an example in, um, in in a general world. So, if you get in your car today and you want to drive somewhere and you use a GPS system, right, uh, whether it's Google Maps or Waze. I don't know if you have Waze in the UK. Yeah, we do. But yeah. if you have Waze, for example, I mean, correct. This GPS things literally tell you where to go based on traffic, right? Mm-hmm. That guides us on, on an everyday basis. So imagine um, uh, understanding an individual and, and, and you could predict um, what mood they're in, right? And so if you look at music, it's a very particular area. I use music as a great example. Uh, a few months ago, I was in Los Angeles and I was talking to um, um, a, a man out of, an uh, entrepreneur out of uh, Israel that was based in in, uh, in LA. And his company was based around using AI in, in music. Mm-hmm. And if you look at things today, for, for example, if you go on Pandora or you go on any of or Spotify or any, or any of these uh, music uh, platforms, you kind of pick what kind of genre of music you want to listen to, right? Or, you, or if you say, I want, I want music that makes me happy or I want music that makes me sleep. Yeah. It's completely different, right? And he gave an example to me about his son. Uh, he, he has a, t- a teenage son where he played um, uh, metallic music to the sun and he tracked his brain waves and to him that was relaxing mm-hmm. but when he tracked for him that was like uh, disturbing him yeah <laughs> right he played mozart and mozart was expressed his son yeah. <laughs> right but for him it was relaxing to him so that kind of gives the idea of this personalized idea of in art right um, if you look at abstract art in general people two people can look at the same image and have complete different reactions to the same mm-hmm. image right yeah. come up so i think exciting and so I might think in a different way so so having insights um, you know from, from your consumers wherever what you want uh, what kind of reaction you're trying to get out of that art you can literally you know curate art based on an individual right you can personalize music to each person mm-hmm. not in this general bucket of it just because you like you know Tupac or you like Mozart means that you like all these other kind of music yeah. right um, and you, you might like that uh, from over perspective but it's 
terms of mood and how that plays with emotions is completely different, right? Uh, it, look at the current pandemic. Imagine uh, when we finally get back to a new normal, um, going to the museum, right? What kind of art will actually harm people down, uh, right? Um, is it just general art? I mean, does, you know, Picasso's art have the same effect post-pandemic uh, mm. or during the pandemic or after? We don't know, right? Those are insights that we could gather and it, that could influence the future art, right? Yeah. And artists in general, um, that in the business of art, uh, that could give them insights to decide, hey, what kind of art do I want to create for this particular moment to help improve people's, uh, what people feel? Yeah. Uh, there are many hospitals today um, um, actually that are leveraging art um, um, into how they, they, they play with people's emotions, yeah. right? People feel better in, in certain environments, right? Um, people in hospitals today, um, you know, can artists come in and, you know, instead of sitting in the room, quarantine for 14 days, how can we leverage art within that space to make people feel better? Yeah. Right? Can you imagine being in, 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 in the room uh, for 14 days, 21 days, um, you know, quarantined and just looking at just blank walls? Yeah. yeah. Right? Um, is it possible to, you know, to immerse art in there and personalize that? And the best way to do that at scale is, is leveraging artificial intelligence. Yeah. You're listening to The Art Show on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. My name's Dane Cobain and I'm here talking to Dr. Emmanuel Fombu, the author of The Future of Healthcare. This is Wickham Sound. Thank you. 
that was Song for Abraham by Franz Alol. You're listening to The Art Show here on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. My name's Dane Cobain and I'm here with Dr. Emmanuel Fombu. We're talking about coronavirus, how it's affected the arts industry and what the future of healthcare is going to look like. There's some really cool uses of AI I've seen in the, you know, in the sort of creative industries as well. So it's funny because you can, I suppose there are two different sort of types because I've seen it be used to sort of imitate artists so there there was an ai i think it made um like a new rembrandt painting for example but then you also get ai that's sort of totally different where it's i mean i guess it all has to come from some sort of input but um you know things like i've seen ai that generates random music that you can use in videos for example so it's quite cool that it can be used to imitate and it also can be used to sort of create something new correct and that's that's and that's a, the, the tricky part of it, right? And we are going into this new world of if it was created and you did not know it was created by AI and it was good, yeah. then was the, does it matter if it was created by a human or by a computer, right? Yeah. And, and that same argument comes also to medicine, right? Where, where we've made this argument that if AI could replace a doctor at certain tasks, then maybe it should, yeah. right? <laughs> same thing as if AI could create better music what is the purpose of art and what's the purpose of, uh, of of anything that we do, right? Is it the outcome that we, that, I mean, we measure by the outcome, right? Yeah. So if you look at, look, let's take a car, the car industry, for example, where you could have a car like a Rolls Royce, mm-hmm. right? And you could say a couple hundred thousand pounds or dollars for a Rolls Royce and you could have, because, and they'll give you the excuse of, oh, okay, it's handmade. Like humans actually get involved in putting the parts together. And then you have uh, another car uh, like a Honda, right? Or, or a Hyundai, for example, or a low-end car, where you could say, hey, I, this car is mass-produced by robots or computers and with, with minimal human input, so this is cheaper than this car that is handmade. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, um, yes, there's value ascribed to the part that humans put their hands in it, but I'm sure those cars are all designed by, on computer systems today, yeah. <laughs> right? And humans physically go in and, and use their hands to do it, so are you paying for the value and additional care put around it? Um, it's, it's a different situation, but what if um, you know, a robot can make it the same kind of car as uh, with the same detail as um, Rolls Royce as a human. Yeah. Uh, What's the difference comes in, right? Um, and the price points um, kind of become different. And so it brings up that question: Is it more of a marketing strategy that humans are involved, or is it more of uh, a computer thing? Mm. Uh, I know back in the nineties, for example, you had Milli Vanilli. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. Right, so Vanilli, for example, you know, when everyone believed they were singing and uh, they were big stars, but when they found out that they were lip syncing, yeah. um, right, um, their career kind of vanished, <laughs> right? So I, I think it's being more upfront and open to the consumer to know exactly what they're getting into and what they're consuming. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I think uh, there's no doubt that uh, uh, computers can understand humans a lot more in terms of data sets, right, mm. and being able to influence behavior uh, in the long run. So I see... Um, you know, the, the roles of DJs being different in the future, the, 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 the role of producers and musicians being different. Yeah. Um, in the future, uh, you know, I'll tell you, our friends now, for example, that are learning how to play the piano, um, you know, guitar online, yeah. using apps, right? Um, that teaches them how to play the piano and guitar, and they have a whole community of people that they could talk to, right? And then learn how to play music. And literally when you play, uh, your phone literally just, or the app just listens to how you play and it helps correct you on how yeah. you play music yeah, better. Yeah. So I think you, you have more human musicians getting better. Um, p- uh, people that have the skills to train these algorithms that actually get more people into music. Yeah. Right. So that, that, so I could see more musicians being uh, scaling up. Yeah. I, I, I mean, myself, I'm, I'm thinking of doing that. And, and that's a great example of, again, of humans and machines combining to be better than either of them individually, you know? No, correct. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think, um, we should not be worried about it. I think it's, it's being able to leverage it and not um, uh, be scared of it, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. in the long run, uh, the most money made in this thing is through concerts and, and to interact with the humans, right? So yes. robots should not be running concerts, yeah. right? So, so there's still, still a role. So instead of, um, you know, you could have uh, music generated by robot, by uh, AI um, algorithms, and you could have human performers actually perform and focus on, put it on a great uh, entertaining show as opposed to um, this generic stuff yeah yeah that makes sense yeah cool um okay one last just one last question i wanted to ask um just 
really just for the for the good of all of all of the listeners really which is um obviously you're kind of a, a, a you talk a lot about uh, preventative healthcare and i want to know what people can well first off what preventative healthcare is and what people can do today to try and you know make sure that they're in the best physical and mental shape you know despite the lockdown great so um when we say preventive care in general, everyone's mind goes directly to, you know, you become vegan and you become like this. I know that's tough, which is a phrase that I do way to go. But the concept here, um, I like to break that concept into the overall big umbrella of predictive medicine, mm-hmm. which goes into predict, uh, predicting what your risk of disease um, is, right? So if you, look, if you look at things, uh, if you look at mental health, for example, you look at, um, you know, cardiovascular disease, cancer, uh, you know, schizophrenia, a bunch of other things, uh, Alzheimer's, right? There is an underlying cause in certain cases that there's a, g- a genetic component of this, right? Mm-hmm. So if you have, have a genetic screening, which is a technology available today, to gene sequencing, uh, to do that, um, I understand your risk of disease uh, going forward. There are things that you could do, this, right? Yeah. What is the best version of you, right? So prevention is not the idea of one size fits all kind of approach, right? So it's how do you personalize that experience to yourself to say, I do understand that uh, if you understand, listen, I suffer from depression, um, trying to figure out what caused it directly, well, that's great, but there's also a genetic component of this, right? I have friends, uh, uh, you know, that have had depression in their families for multiple generations, mm-hmm. right? And these are wealthy people that uh, hedge fund managers with millions of dollars. So it's not a thing of like, oh, it's a poor person that is depressed because they're poor, right? There are wealthy people that are also depressed. We have uh, cases of celebrities that are, you thought they had a perfect life, so they mm-hmm. commit suicide, and you are shocked by this, right? So it's a real kind of issue that we have to look at it. And then and we understand that there's also like uh, weather impacts of things, right? Where we know maybe sometimes gloomy weather kind of impacts uh, suicide rates, mm-hmm. um, you know, maybe something happened. There was so, um, people. Sorry, just just to interrupt, there was a study I think that we covered at some point where it said, um, I think it was a study found that moving from, it was like moving from Chicago to Florida is as good for your mental health as taking antidepressants. No, 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 correct. And if you look at uh, antidepressants in general, right, most antidepressants actually have the effect of actually increasing suicide rates, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Which, which, which becomes tricky um, on its own, um, like on its own, on, on that light. Mm-hmm. So, so there are a lot of things that we could, we could learn from this um, overall, right? So if we understand this, then we could say, okay, prevention, prevention does not mean that you, you, you never get it, right? Mm-hmm. Or, you, or it's because you, you get a disease means that you fail <laughs> yeah. prevention, right? So it's, it's about predicting your risk of disease and then managing that, right? So it's, it, it, it's predicting, preventing where... It, Basically, we think we talk about um, you know delaying the cause or delaying how I mean the onset of, of disease or mitigating it, and then after then if you get disease at a point whatever it is, um, then you want to intercept disease, mm-hmm. right? So you want to jump in early to start managing it, and then hopefully get to the point of cure or understanding. And and cure does not mean you have this magic pill that you take and then everything is, disappears, mm-hmm. right? It, it's understanding that. Hey, listen. I know what triggers me get into a particular mood, right? And I, I know what triggers my disease, right? Yeah. If I eat a lot of sugar today, then I, oh, I eat a lot of salt. My pressure goes up. So mm-hmm. you understanding that, and so being able to to then control all that and live the best version of you, right? So remember, this goes down to personalize you as an individual. Yeah. Um, and you are not, yeah. So so and, and so you are a unique individual, and so whatever it is that mitigates you and makes you become the best person. That's the goal of, of what we're pushing for. And, and I think, interestingly, this whole pandemic right now has actually put this at the forefront mm-hmm. um, of this happening, right? Where people are doing uh, 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 preventive um, and predictive models happening all day today, right? So you, you, I, I know we talked about it day in, um, in, I think, the predictive medicine book and uh, in uh, our upcoming book, where the whole idea here of you look at people today where they have something called contact tracing, mm-hmm. right? Where if, if one person has has been exposed to COVID nineteen, then they find the other people around them based on data that they used to track who they've been around, right? right? And then prevent those people from getting interact with other people. It's the same concept we argued about in predictive medicine, right? It's the same idea. Mm. You have data sets that tells you at risk of something. So instead of waiting till you get infected with COVID nineteen, can we do stuff to prevent that from happening? Yeah. Right. If you know you have, you have diabetes, and if you get infected with this, you have a higher risk of dying. Should you wait till you get infected with COVID-19 then figure it out? No, you want to prevent yourself mm-hmm. from getting infected with it. So that mindset in general should be something that we apply across everything in life, yeah. right? Um, and this applies, uh, you know, even even to art, uh, every single thing else that we do. So so I, I think uh, 
the idea of prediction and the idea of, of algorithms and AI is, is getting used in, in our lives day to day. And uh, I think it's just the way we're going to do things. The more we generate data sets, the better insights we have and the better uh, we can actually improve our lives. Thank you very much, Dr. Emmanuel Fombu, for joining us. You're listening to The Art Show on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. My name's Dane Cobain. Here are some adverts and a little bit of music. Love music. Love talk. Love Wickham Sound. From the 1st of April, your new Buckinghamshire Council will replace the existing county and district councils and continue to deliver all the services you are used to. Visit buckinghamshire.gov.uk. We understand that everyday life is going to become challenging over the next few weeks and months. But we want to reassure you that the Wickham Sound team are here to inspire and entertain you with local, relevant programmes and information. We followed government advice and set our team up to work remotely. We have taken all the steps we can to keep our team safe so we can be here for you. Local businesses. Perhaps you have closed temporarily or have found a new and innovative way of working. If you want to reach customers with your message, get in touch with us today. We can get through this if we all pull together. Please stay at home, stay tuned to Wickham Sound for the latest information and do get in touch with us to let us know how you're doing, if you'd like a song played or just want us to say hello to you. This is Wickham Sound. A man who is good with his finances Has a well paid job and works in the city Who buys you gifts and expensive things Are you in love with his money or is that actually him? Wow, got you feeling powers that you never knew you had It was only a year ago you didn't want to be In a relationship, didn't want to feel held down Or become attached to a human again Not after all the bothers that you have with your ex on this phone you found texts and pics That's a feeling that sticks within Crafts is on how we live to what we wear The type of ordeal stick with a person Family and friends can see you're hurting And everyday experience is another lesson learned and Another present brought another day Where you question yourself and your flaws Tired of giving it your all I don't know if it's good enough We've been both tired, we've been working all month I don't know if it's good enough We've been stuck here a while, nobody ever helped us up I don't know if it's good enough We've been both tired, we've been working all month I don't know if it's good enough We've been stuck between the lines of loyalty or love She loves me not, she loves me, yeah She loves me not, she loves me, yeah She loves me not, she loves me, yeah I'm just picking up the pedals, letting you know I'm here She loves me not, she loves me, yeah She loves me not, she loves me, yeah she loves me not, she loves me, yeah I'm just picking up the petals, let you know I'm yeah. here I'm like flaws, we all have them The notion of adulthood, lights, camera, action What you felt was love, but he didn't feel the passion So you question yourself on what you need You need a girl's night out where you can chill with your mates And talk over a bottle of wine Now I can't tell you, you wake up tomorrow, everything will be fine If I was you, I'd delete his number, delete his line Get comfortable again, move on with your life Don't get locked to somebody that truly doesn't care Who never notices all the good things you do Like doing up your hair Trust is a big thing and when it becomes broken it's tough to repair I mean you can sit down and have a talk discuss your problems after that you gotta call it a day there's really no option what's the point if it's fake love or if he only loves you when you wear your makeup to him you'll never feel good enough I don't know if it's good enough we've been both tired we've been working all month I don't know if it's good enough we've been stuck here a while nobody ever helped us up I don't know if it's good enough We've been both tired, we've been working all month I don't know if it's good enough We've been stuck between the lines of loyalty or love She loves me not, she loves me, yeah She loves me not, she loves me, yeah She loves me not, she loves me, yeah I'm just picking up the pedals, let you know I'm here She loves me not, she loves me, yeah She loves me not, she loves me, yeah She loves me not, she loves me, yeah I'm just picking up the pedals, let you know I'm here She loves me not, she loves me,
That was Good Enough by Morel. I first came across him at a spoken word night I used to run at the Rose and Crown, actually, back in the day. Um, he came along to test out some of his material with more of a spoken word vibe to it to, you know, push his boundaries, which I think is super cool. Seen him perform live a bunch of times as well, and this is his, his new single. There's a, a music video for it as well. Definitely check it out on uh, YouTube if you get a chance. All right, so it's that part of the show where I recommend a book, a movie slash film, and uh, an album to keep you guys going throughout quarantine. So for this week's show, it's going to have to be The Innocence Files, which I've been binging on on Netflix. And basically, it follows uh, The Innocence Project, which is an American organization that's dedicated to reopening and reinvestigating criminal cases where there's evidence to show that the person who's in jail might be innocent. And to be honest, it's kind of crazy some of the things that people have been convicted on. If you've seen things like Making a Murderer, you'll know, you know, kind of the the strong arming that the police have been known to use to get confessions out of people. But even there are, you know, mistakes with DNA teams. There was a guy who was falsifying tests. Uh, there was an episode on, um, like, bite mark analysis, which you see a lot on shows like CSI and stuff, um, which is still allowed in the courtroom, but which apparently doesn't have too much science behind it. I know that was what got... Uh, I think it was Ted Bundy. I think it was Ted Bundy who got caught by bite mark analysis. But there are also quite a few people who've been kind of incorrectly imprisoned because of it. So it is one of those shows that when you watch it, it gets you grinding your teeth and kind of frustrated that there's there's not more that you can do. Like people are having, you know, 15, 20 years of their lives taken away from them. And, you know, there are guys who are in jail for a crime they didn't commit. And then they couldn't go out to their mother's funeral and things. So... I guess it's kind of an eye-opening documentary to see some of the, the brutality that goes on there. As for this week's book, that is going to be Notes from a Big Country by Bill Bryson. Bill Bryson is a travel writer. Uh, he was born in America, in Des Moines, Iowa. I think that's how you say that. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, then he moved to the UK and spent about 20, 30 years here and then moved back to America. And this book is basically a collection of some of the newspaper articles that he wrote for a, a British newspaper between about 1996 and 1998. And it kind of covers his, you know, reacquaintance with American culture. And it's really interesting because it has this sort of unique point of view that not many people could have as somebody who was born American, then lived in the UK and then went back to America. And also his wife's English. I mean, one of the things he talked about was the struggles with uh, immigration. Uh, his, because his wife is obviously English and is now living in America so he talks about his struggles with immigration and uh, he, he cited the case of this one guy he was a Cuban immigrant and basically he was stuck with immigration because they were refusing to accept him unless he provided, provided them with a full set of fingerprints but he'd lost three of his fingers in an industrial accident and so he was stuck on this constant kind of loop with the immigration services, trying to get them to understand he'd, he'd submitted his seven fingerprints and that was the best he could do. And uh, Bryson said, you know, he'd, he'd have better luck trying to find his other three fingers for it. So yeah, he has this quite irreverent sort of sense of humor, I suppose, quite witty as well at times. But also there are loads of facts that are fascinating, like just the fact that if you're an American, you're twice as likely to die of accidental causes just by being American. He had a little article that was probably like 800 words long. You'd read it in, you know, three minutes or something. And he said by the end of this article, four Americans will have injured themselves on their bedding. So there's all these kind of fascinating little tidbits. And, uh, you know, it's, it's quite nice to read something like that. It's quite light and quite humorous when maybe the rest of the world isn't as light and as humorous as you would like it to be. And then this week's album is an album called Dreamies by uh, Bill Holt. It's... It's an album with a story behind it. He basically spent about two years recording it in his mum's house. Um, he spent like an entire night recording Rainfall and then listening to the entire night of Rainfall back to get the perfect two second sample and stuff. It's kind of considered by a lot of people to be one of the earliest examples of sampling in sort of popular music. I think it was 
around about the 1970s or so. It does actually have a literary uh, tie-in as well. The, the title, Dreamies, it's based on uh, an Isaac Asimov short story where dreams are dreamt up by professional dreamers and then they record them and then you can you know go to the supermarket or whatever and, and buy a dream. And so the idea here of it being called Dreamies is that this is the musical equivalent of those dream programs. Uh, it, it's also split up into program 10 and program 11 because originally it was one on each side of a vinyl. And the reason it's 10 and 11 is because the Beatles did Revolution Number 9 and it's kind of heavily inspired by that. Uh, you can get it on a CD and it's on Spotify and stuff, but I saw recently the vinyl, like the vinyl reissue is out, so I'm I'm pretty tempted to get that as well, so I might do that and report back on it next week. It's uh, super psychedelic as well, the, the way I heard about it, my best friend met a hippie outside a concert, and this hippie said um, he was straight edge, he didn't drink or uh, smoke or do drugs or anything, uh, he said he didn't need to because he had this album, so... That's a pretty good recommendation, I'm going to say. Anyway, that brings us about to the end of this week's show. So, as always, my name's Dane Cobain. This has been The Art Show on Wickham Sound 106.6 FM. You can find us on Facebook. You can email me on dane.cobain at wickhamsound.org. Definitely want to hear from you if you're a local musician as well, because I'm trying to play as much local music as I can. And to be honest, starting to run out a little bit, so we might have to start using people's live sessions soon, but hey-ho. Speaking of live sessions, I've just seen something that you might want to put in your diary, which is Sloth in the City, who I mentioned earlier. It's Andrea and Betty. Andrea plays guitar and Betty plays alto sax or tenor sax. She plays one of the saxes. They're doing a Sloth in the City live Corona gig on Sunday the 3rd of May at 3 p.m. And if you just search for it on uh, Facebook, You'll be able to see all the info and stuff. They're amazing, so definitely uh, check it out. They're put here. We're running a laid-back Sunday afternoon session. Grab your drink, optionally go to your garden, and join us for a unique acoustic jazz session. Oh, and of course, be sure to maintain your social distancing. I've also heard back, and Maz Manzini should hopefully be joining us for next week's show. We'll see. It kind of depends when I can catch people to chat to them on the phone and stuff. But um, we've got some great guests coming up soon, so be sure to tune in in the future. And of course, speaking of Maz Manzini, here is one of his tracks. This is You Should Have Jumped. It's actually one of my favourites of his. Uh, it's a right banger, as the kids would say. So enjoy that, and I will see you again next Tuesday at 7pm. Thanks for listening. You sure the jumped.